Thanks for stopping by today and Happy New Year to everybody. Today we're going to cover the five most popular videos on my channel for 2021. Number five is going to be a video that I've had a lot of comments on and have helped a lot of people out if you're brand new. This video describes what the, uh, the modes are in each one of your layers. Um, it's called line, fill, and fill plus line. Um, I'm going to link it in the description of the video. You'll see it up here. If you haven't seen it before, go check it out. What I do in this video is I take one single design and I apply different modes to that design to get a completely different look with just changing the modes in your layer. About 9 minutes and 50 seconds into this video, I go into how Lightburn uses the fill command. And there's a lot more to the fill command than meets the eye. Once you understand how Lightburn uses that particular command, um, you can do all kinds of very cool things, but you got to understand what Lightburn wants in order to do that. So go check that video out. The other thing that I will tell you, I want to address kind of the elephant in the room with this video. The audio is absolutely horrible. I know that and I apologize for it. It was when I was fairly early into the channel. Um, I didn't have any additional audio equipment. I was just using what was on the camera or what was on the computer. And there's no doubt that the audio has gotten better. I've used the donations that you guys have provided me uh, to the channel and have purchased better audio equipment. And so I'm hoping that my videos get better and better as time goes on. Go check out number five. It's a very cool video. If you're new to Lightburn and you need to understand what those modes are in each one of the layers, this is a video for you. Let's go check it out. Okay, number four is understanding minimum power in Lightburn. This was a game changer for me when I learned how to use this. This primarily is when you're using the line command and you're, doing, you're scoring a design or you're basically putting a line down on a design and uh, most designs will have larger components and smaller components and a lot of times what you'll see is you'll see burn marks in the corners of those, th those designs. And what that, what that means is that your minimum power setting uh, in your line command is too high and you need to reduce that. Um, it's one of the only times that uh, you will have a difference in minimum and maximum power uh, in Lightburn is when you're using the line command. Now, I'm not talking about cutting. I'm talking about where you're just actually drawing something on a material using the line command and you're getting burnt corners uh, or scorches in the corners. It's your minimum uh, a power setting that, that's generating that. If you check this video out, it's going gonna, it's gonna to show you and demonstrate to you, number one, what your minimum power threshold is on your laser. And everybody that owns a laser should really know what that is. Because a lot of times when you're doing this, when you're scoring a, an intricate design, you absolutely have to know what your minimum threshold is on your laser tube. And you're typically working just above that in a lot of cases where you're getting some very intricate designs, but you're not getting any burning. So um, understanding minimum power when you're using the line command, that was number four. It's had over 31,000 views since I uh, posted it. And a lot of people seem to really enjoy it because what it does is if you're getting scorching in, in whether it's text or a, 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 an intricate design, once you understand minimum power and you set it accordingly, and I show you how to set it in this video, your post-process cleanup is eliminated or greatly reduced, uh, and, and that's saving everybody time. So if you haven't seen this particular video yet, go check it out. It will save you a ton of time. Okay, let's talk about number three. And number three has been a very popular video for me ever since I released it. I released it in 2020, very early on in the, into the channel. And uh, it just is a top performer. With over 41,000 views so far, it's adding a, a camera to your laser. 
In this video, I discuss about the installation of a camera and we do a couple of fun projects uh, once I have the camera installed. Now I'll tell you that I probably only use the camera maybe 10 or 15% of the time, but when you need it, it's very handy to have. I typically use it if I have something unusually shaped that I want to engrave and I can't get a, or I don't want to take the time to draw a frame around it, something like that or that, they're, that I need to trace something that is very unusual. The trace feature on these cameras, as long as you understand how it's used, can be very powerful. So if you haven't seen this particular video and you are thinking about adding a camera to your laser, this will give you a good idea on kind of what it takes to install it, um, how to use it, those kind of things. I will tell you that they're not perfect, meaning that don't expect to install a, a camera on your laser and that it's gonna be perfect 100% of the time. The bigger the laser you have, the more of an issue that is, just from an accuracy perspective. If you've got a small laser, typically they're gonna be a little bit more accurate. If you've got a great big laser bed, they're gonna be less accurate. But for the most part, they're gonna get you into the ballpark very quickly. It's a fun video, I enjoyed making it, go check it out. Let's talk about number two. Number two was a, a video about making your first laser box on Lightburn. One of the things that I always struggle with uh, right after I got my laser was I was constantly filling the top of that laser full of all kinds of stuff and I didn't have any place to put it. So I thought to myself, you know what would be really cool is to do a video on creating a couple of simple boxes that you can put on the top of your laser and store all your goodies that you're typically using all the time. That video has gotten well over 51,000 views since I created it, and it's still today a very uh, strong performer on my channel. If you haven't seen this and you'd like to make some more, uh, you know, you'd like to do your own thing when it comes to boxes like this of just about any size and shape, Go check that video out. It shows you how to dial in your kerf offset um, and then how to, how to design the box um, and make one. And you'll be amazed on how quick and easy they can be. Once you get a few settings dialed in, um, it's a lot of fun. So if you haven't done or you haven't created any of your own boxes like this and you'd like to do that, go check out number two. It's very popular. It's quick and easy. Let me know what you think. Let's talk about video number one. This video has been number one since the day I released it. It's got well over 92,000 views and it is 10 tips and tricks for new Lightburn users. What I did when I put this video together is I had been using Lightburn for about a year and I kind of wrote down all of the things that I really use just about on every project, whether I'm doing a design or I'm kicking the work to the laser or I'm modifying an existing design, I tried to narrow down the 10 biggest things that made a difference to me when it comes to laser work. And those are what I included in this video. So if you haven't seen this video, go check it out. Um, there's a lot of things there that you might not know that could really help you out in your day-to-day -day process. It's pretty incredible the growth we've seen on this channel in just a year. We started 2021 with about a thousand subscribers. And uh, just before Christmas, we topped our 10,000th subscriber. And I just want to say thank you so much to all the subscriptions, the comments, the likes. Um, they all mean a lot to me. I'm really looking forward to the content that we're going to create in 2022. And until next time, Thanks and have a great day.